morning. What a rainy day it is out here in Blaine, Washington. Yes, that's where I am. Hey folks, good to have you with me. Young and old, hopefully. Um, I like to encourage the younger ones to watch because you're not going to find anything inappropriate on this channel, no bad language. Because um, I know when I was a young kid, 10 years old and younger, I always had this fascination about truck driving. And you're not going to find anything inappropriate on this channel. So mom and dad, if you want your little one to learn about trucking, the good, the bad, the ugly, you're going to get all of that without all the garbage. My name is Trucker Ray. Welcome to my channel. If you're viewing for the very first time, I share my experiences driving the highways of North America, and I love to share the gospel of Yeshua, Jesus Christ our Lord. And if you've been here before, my regular YouTubers, welcome back. Pleasure to have you back as usual. I am currently in Blaine, Washington. I had a load to pick up yesterday in Langley and it was a 7 p.m. appointment to pick up and yeah it uh, they didn't have me out of there until 2300 hours 11 o'clock so I'm like oh boy so I got as far I got over the border that was it ah, that's as far as I got so my destination on this trip I have a load of frozen bread with me again which is from uh, one of the bakeries in Abbotsford it's good bread too by the way um, I've had some I've had I've sampled them some of their bread that they gave me <laughs> not out of the back of the trailer but they gave me a couple loaves uh, one time back and uh, it's good bread so where am I heading I'm heading to Lancaster Texas, which is just southeast of um, of Dallas. Actually, you know, you might as well just say it's in Dallas because it's like very, very close to Dallas, just on the outskirts. I think it's one of the uh, little areas uh, just outside the city, and uh, we have to be there by the seventh, I believe it is. So we got four days to get there, and on the fifth day at 4 a.m. we deliver. Yeah. Another four o'clock in the morning appointment, which will be 2 a.m. for me. But by the time I get there, I'll already have adapted to the hours. So on the final day, I will make it a point to leave early, very early, so I can shut down earlier, where when four o'clock rolls around, my 10 my 10 o'clock will be up and I won't be in violation, if you know what I mean. You just gotta, you gotta try to plan these things out, especially when you're dealing with the different time zones. It can be a real pain in the behind. So you just have to, uh, just gotta be smart about it, right? Just gotta be smart about it. And, and you know what? It's just been really, really ugly weather ever since, um, I was in Calgary the other day and it was like this and it is still like this so i'm really hoping to get into some nice warm weather and i got a feeling once i get into texas i'll see lots of warm weather <laughs> we will see but anyway onward we go along the i-5 heading towards the i-90 which is one one of my favorite runs to go over snoqualmie pass and it's even nicer when you have a light load like this.
the Yakima was going to be nice. It's always nice here. <clears throat> Very fond memories of coming here, picking up apples. <laughs> yeah, beautiful country. I remember the first time I ever came into Yakima, I stayed at the rest area which I'm going to be stopping at, by the way, very quickly here to do my 30 and get a bite to eat. And the bridge that you cross over to get to it is uh, quite impressive. It's quite an impressive bridge. And the rest area is really nice too. All right, friends, unless something changes, I have my assignment. When I'm done in uh, Lancaster, I'll be heading down to Laredo to pick up a uh, load of avocados. <clears throat> Apparently, the place I'm going to doesn't have the best reputation for treating their drivers very well, but you know what? I will leave it up to the Lord. If it's His will that I go there, then that's where I go. And I always like to present myself in a very friendly, professional, patient manner to the people at the counter when I first check in. And sometimes that makes all the difference in the world on how they treat you. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? So we'll see how it goes. It's really too bad I can't show you much of a view, but this is actually a bit of a, um, I guess you would call this a bit of a, not a canyon, but a, a bit of a gorge in here. Nice countryside here, it really is. There's the rest area there. And uh, it's nice out here in Yakima. It's 26 degrees Celsius, what a difference. You go from rain, rain, rain to sunshine. It's nice. And this is a nice rest area. I don't think I've ever had a problem parking at this rest area. There's always parking. Always parking. So, we will take our break, have a bite to eat, get outside, get a little bit of vitamin D, and then continue on.
to uh, on the other side of Snoqualmie Pass. It's been really nice weather, beautiful weather. All right, so I wanted to share with you guys what I'm trying to accomplish. I have a delivery. Uh, right now it's Friday, and I have a delivery on the seventh, which I think is Tuesday. <clears throat> See, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Yeah. So I'm delivering on Tuesday on the seventh at four o'clock in the morning. So, to deliver at 4 in the morning, I'm going to need to have 10 hours off previous. So I need to get there on the 6th at around 5.30 in the afternoon. And to accomplish this, I have to use up as many miles, or should I say minutes and hours on my, on my uh, ELD as possible. Uh, in my 11 hour day. So for example today I got another hour and 23 minutes to go before I get to a truck stop and I got an hour and 38 minutes left. That's about as close as I can get unless I end up in a field somewhere <laughs> if I use all of it. So this is my goal to use up as much time as I can every single day and on the last day on the 6th which I should make it to the sh to the receiver and park outside for the delivery for four o'clock in the morning. I want to shut down by five or five p.m. on the sixth. That's my challenge. We will see if I do it or not. <laughs> I'm really hoping so. We will see. Anyway, uh, look at this gorgeous, phenomenal day out here. Just absolutely lovely. And uh, tomorrow is 4th of July, and it's kind of sad. I've been hearing a lot of things on the news. I listen to it a little bit, then I get depressed and I shut it off. There's a lot of part of the country that's not going to be celebrating Independence Day tomorrow. And uh, I don't blame them. There's no freedom in the country anymore. It really isn't. You gotta wear a mask, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta do this, you gotta do that, you gotta use this much toilet paper, you gotta do this. There's no freedom in the country anymore. That's gone, long gone. ready to get going here. I made it into Boise, Idaho last night. I, bu I buy these eggs. I was boiling eggs for a while, but it's just so much of a pain in the butt because I don't always get home enough time, enough home time to be boiling eggs. And So you can buy like a package like this at Walmart, at least in Canada. I don't know if they have them in the US. But they probably do. And there's six of them for like three bucks. And I know you can get an entire dozen for like three or four bucks, but if you think about it, I have two of these for breakfast in the morning, plus my Fido Berry. And for three bucks, what does it cost you normally for a breakfast? Probably eight, nine bucks. So you know what? To me, it's worth it doing this. So I like doing this, because this gives you really good protein. And, uh, seems to be the old you know a good way to go so I like to get the protein I don't like spending any more money than I need to put these up here I don't normally like spending any more money than I need to in restaurants the whole point of being out here on the road is to do your job I mean once in a while I'll, I'll do a treat maybe you know on a reset I'm out, if I'm out of town I'll do breakfast but a majority of the time I will spend my money uh, at Walmart and buy what I need there. All right, we're ready to go here. I've already done my pre-trip. And we're ready to go. And we're looking forward to another. We did 649 miles yesterday. Gee, which way is the exit here? I don't know. I don't think there is. I don't think it matters which way is the exit. 
Well, we did six, 600 and I think maybe 25, 26 miles yesterday, so we did really good. So we got three more days to make up some really good time so I can get my delivery at four o'clock in the morning. And that delivery is, like I said, in Lancaster, which is going to be uh, just on the outskirts of the city of Dallas. So uh, for those of you that never seen the city of Dallas before, we may get a really nice shot of it. So I hope you're looking forward to that. Look at this desert area here. That sure seems like desert, doesn't it? <laughs> Had a really good rest last night. Slept well. And you know why? <laughs> I took my veggie greens last night again before I went to bed. And I swear, man, that stuff has got something in it that just puts your lights out. And it's nice. It's really nice. All right, so we're gonna jump on the 84. I don't know what my destination is going to be yet because I like to calculate that after my 30 minute break. But today is the day, another day that the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice. Amen. Hallelujah. We are stopping for our 30 because I'm starting to get hungry. And um, yeah, I need to stretch my legs too. Need to stretch my legs. What a beautiful day it's been today. So far, so good. I had something interesting happen to me today. Um, before I started my day, I wanted to check my online credit card statement just because I wanted to make sure everything was fine and everything looked good. And I noticed there was a charge on there that I don't recall doing and that was a $18 charge, US money, charged, um, what was it, Amazon Prime or something, the, the, the service that gets your parcels to you quicker. And I'm like, you know what, I don't recall doing that. I, I have an Amazon account. but. I don't even have Prime because I don't use it enough. And anyway, to make a long story short, found out somebody had fraudulently used my card for Amazon Prime. And the only way they could have possibly used that is because then I went onto my Amazon account and realized my credit card was still connected to my account. And that was a big mistake. And I'm like, oh, I never do that. I don't know what I was thinking. So let me just give a little bit of advice to my lovely dear friends. If you have your credit card connected to your Amazon account, remove it. Only use your account 
when you need to and add your card and then remove the card when you're done because someone yeah someone used it tried to or made a purchase but I'm gonna have it uh, taken off they're gonna refund that in two days so hey uh, maybe maybe this happened to me so I could tell somebody out there to avoid a major headache because uh, yeah that's just not right some people are just crooks they're this you know it's in the, it's in them to steal and they don't care and uh, if you guys want to prevent yourself from a headache I strongly recommend that well I don't know what's happening here I've been to this place before I know what that guy over there is doing. But I I'm gonna park it right in here somewhere. I don't need to go into the store. So uh, yeah, if you have a credit card that's connected to your Amazon account, don't leave it connected because there's crooks out there that know how to hack Amazon. Because there's no other way they would have got my card number because I don't use it that often. All right, my dear friends. No, actually, you know what? I'm going to do this. Yeah, there's a spot right there. There's a spot right there. A lovely, beautiful, gorgeous day today. Man, can't get over it. So I'm doing some pretty good time today. I really am. And uh, I'm going to make myself a sandwich, which I don't eat a whole lot of bread, but I bought some sourdough buns, and I got a bit of a weakness for sourdough buns. So once in a while, I'll treat myself to that, but it'll be a sardine sandwich. <laughs> Even though, actually, you know, maybe I'll just do something else. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So we're just going to take our 30, and then we'll be back on our way again. Funny thing is, Loves is really good, but 
I'd rather park at a at a Flying J or Petro or, Pe or Pilot rather, uh, just simply because that's where we fuel up and um, we get our free showers. With the points, we can get free reserve parking if we want. So why not, right? So might as well. Unless I'm in an area where they charge you for parking, and some places do, and then you know you got to go where you can, wherever you can park, right? So I guess Laura B is straight ahead. We got another about a, another five miles to go, and uh, looks like we're gonna have. Uh, really short day it's so 6 46 Pacific time for me <laughs> so yeah did really good today did good did good Hi everyone, this is Ray Gaucher, and welcome to this edition of Bible Break. The title of this episode, Being Strong in the Midst of Fear. Being strong in the midst of fear because fear is all around us. And to me, this is a very important message because even I recently was dealing with a lot of fear. And I was wondering, what's going on? Why am I feeling all this fear? I normally have a lot of trust in the Lord because normally if we don't trust the Lord as much as we should, fear ends up overtaking us. So I decided maybe it might be a good idea to try to encourage others on, on, on some scripture verses that encouraged me. Now, before we go into this, I just want to quickly pray if you want to join me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity for to share your precious word. And Lord, I pray that the Holy Spirit would just open everyone's minds and hearts to your word and your instruction and that they would know, Lord, they can trust you with every bit of their heart. We pray in Yeshua's name. Amen. Now, everybody knows that I am not an ordained minister. Maybe a tiny bit of an evangelist, maybe a little bit of a preacher, but I'm not an, an educated person that has been in the seminary. And some people might think that, well, you know, I really wish I could preach the Lord and I really wish I could do this and do that for God, but I'm uneducated. I, I really don't have the education for it. Well, neither was the 12 apostles. Who taught them the Holy Spirit? So be encouraged because what I feel that the Lord has shared with me today, because I was wondering, I want to preach this message. And I'm like, I don't know the Bible well enough. I do know the Bible, but I don't know it well enough like these preachers and these evangelists. But then I thought to myself, these amazing gentlemen that do this job, they have an entire week to present a message for Sunday service. And I have only wrapped this up in about 24 hours. So, but I do think it's going to be an amazing message for you. So if you find yourself dealing with a lot of fear, fear not. For the Lord is with you. And I really do hope this message um, helps you a lot. Now, the reason why I wanted to do a message on fear is because it's, there's so much of it around us. Um, just look what's in the media. Uh, look, at, look what happened in Beirut. You take one look at that bomb. That was enough to put a little bit of fear into me. I'm like, what is going on? That like, looked like a tactical nuclear weapon uh, with the mushroom cloud and, and, the, and the shock wave. 
And that's enough to put a little bit of fear into you. You're like, what is going on? Because we had, and I remember that uh, President Trump, when he was uh, giving message, he said, this is something we haven't seen in a very long time. And that almost made me think, is he talking about Hiroshima? I mean, just, and this, and there's so many people on YouTube that are talking about the comets that are coming in Planet X and Nibiru or whatever you want to call it. And the meteors that are coming and um, that the uh, COVID-19 pandemic is coming back and, and, and it's going to hit a second and third and fourth wave. And, and the world is going to be um, forced to take a vaccine and everything. And you're like, ah, when did, you know, no wonder we're fearing, no wonder we are afraid. And, you know, somebody might say, I'm a very strong believer and I still fear every day. Well, what is it you're reading? Are you reading articles online? Are you like just totally binging on YouTube? I even find myself doing that at times. And I'm like, I can't do this. Got to get into the word of God. Got to get into the word of God. So I wanted to make this presentation for you to encourage you that God is 100% in control. And I've got a lot of scripture verses I'm going to go through. It's not very lengthy, but I think these will really be helpful for you. I won't be posting them on the screen. I will post the scripture verse on the screen, like the, where you can find it, so you can make notes on where it is. I'm not gonna actually put the verse on there because some of them are long. So if you guys wanna follow along with me, uh, you can pause the video at any time. I'm reading out of the complete Jewish Bible, but you can use any translation because you just have to look up the, the verse in your translation. Um, I think most translations are good, except uh, I, I probably would not recommend the NIV because it is missing so much and it's such a watered down, down translation. And I don't know, I, I, I had to say that. <laughs> so we've, we've got a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff to talk about. Now, let's think about the word fear. Um, where does the word fear come from? Well, if we look in Hebrew, um, fear means, uh, what, what does it say here? It says phobios or phobio, which would come from the word, um, he's got a, a phobia. That's, I think, where we get the word phobia. It means fear, terror, but it could also mean reverence and awe. And we will see some scripture verses which God uses both all four of those meanings more more or less in one scripture verse it's pretty amazing so why don't we start um again if you want to follow along just jot the stuff down and you can study it later if you like so first let's go to deuteronomy chapter uh 31 <coughs> excuse me and let's go to chapter 31 verse 6 and I'm reading out of the complete Jewish Bible. If you want to read along with this translation, just go online if you don't have a translation and look, uh, look up BibleGateway.com and uh, just select CJB and you'll find it. All right, so Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. And I'm going to comment a little bit as I go along with these. Be strong, be bold, don't be afraid or frightened of them. Now, Deuteronomy, here is Moses instructing the children of Israel here. Be strong, be bold, don't be afraid of or frightened of them, for Adonai your God is going with you. He will neither fail you nor abandon you. It's the same thing for us. The Lord is with us every single day. If you are a child of God, which what I mean by that is if you are a believer, if you believe in him that he is your father, our father's going to take care of us. Um, if you are a non-believer, um, or should I say, if you hang around with a lot of non-believers, you will find that you will probably be a lot more fearful of things around you because non-believers don't have that trust in God because they don't have God in their life. And this is why it's so important for us to share our faith with other believers because it's not a fable. God is real. Our Father is real. And um, he wants to protect his children just as we protect our children as fathers and mothers. All right, let's go to Isaiah. We got a, a couple of verses in Isaiah 41, 13. We're going to do first, or should I say, let's do 41, 10. Don't be afraid for I am with you. Don't be distressed for I am your God. Obviously this is God talking. I give you strength. I give you help. I support you with my victorious hand. I love that. 
I support you with my victorious hand. Not my sword or my army of angels, my hand. So we'll go to also to 41 verse uh, 10, or verse 13 rather. For I, Adonai, your God, say to you, as I hold you, hold your right hand, have no fear, I will help you. Isn't that beautiful? Say to you, as I hold your right hand, have no fear. I didn't say that right the first time, I apologize. I'll read it again. For I, Adonai, your God, say to you, as I hold your right hand, have no fear, I will help you. You know, it's, it's amazing. I was reading and doing a lot of binging, watching videos on YouTube and that, about all the stuff that's going on. And I really had a hard time sleeping. I even had nightmares and just anxiety. And as soon as I started to study this and read these scriptures, it was just, that was lifted. This just really does lift the fear. The Word of God, the Word of God is real. It breathes. It's real. All right. Isaiah 43, uh, chapter 43, verse 1. But now, but no, if I could say this right, but now this is what Adonai says. He, <coughs> excuse me. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, Israel, don't be afraid, for I have redeemed you. I am calling you by your name, and I love this, you are mine. Isn't that beautiful? You are mine. And you know what? You are his as well. And when we give our life to the Lord, we become his. And he protects his. Um, he mentions in the Bible when one sheep disappears from the flock, he'll go after that one sheep. He'll go after that one sheep. So he will not let one sheep go astray. He will not let you go astray. Let's go into the book of Psalms 34. Chapter 34, verse 7 says, The angel of Adonai who encamps around those who fear him delivers them. Now remember what I said earlier, fear can also mean reverence, it could also mean awe, it means respect. The same fear we had for our parents when we were kids. So the angel of Adonai who encamps around those who fear him delivers them. And that's another thing too. Some might say, oh, we have to fear God. That's not good. What kind of a loving God is that? I think anybody with any kind of maturity would know what that meaning of fear is. It means to absolutely respect and look at him with reverence and awe that he can do nothing wrong. That's the way it is. He can do nothing wrong. He is perfect. If we had respect and awe for our parents when we were little kids, this is the respect and awe we need to have of our Father in Heaven. Psalm 46, 1-3. Psalm 46, 1 to 3. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we are unafraid, even if the earth gives way. Okay, guys, listen to this. In case those of you that are frightened of these comets and these asteroids that are coming towards the earth. And if you don't know anything about that, I'll go into that on <laughs> another video. But don't be afraid of that, because Ezekiel 38, 39 says that God is going to rain down um, brimstone. He's going to, he's going to, there's going to be fire that's going to come out of the sky that's going to destroy these armies that are going to come after Israel during the Gog and, Gog and Magog war. So how do we know these meteors aren't heading their way for them? So just, <laughs> this, this one's for you if you're worried about what's going on on the earth right now. <coughs> Excuse me. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we are unafraid. Even if the earth gives away, even if the mountains tumble into the depths of the sea, even if its waters rage and form foam, rather, the mountains shake at its turbulence. And the mountains shake at its turbulence. It doesn't matter if the entire world comes to a crumble. God is in complete control. He is. Remember in Revelation, when it says when all these things are going to hit the earth, this is not for his church. This is judgment on the earth for the non-believer, for those who have just blasphemed God, 
And, and we see so much of that right now, just in government and everything. It's just absolutely terrible. Can I get an amen on that one? All right, let's go to Psalm 118, uh, 6 and 7. With Adonai on my side, I fear nothing. What can human beings do to me? With Adonai on my side as my help, I will look with triumph at those who hate me. <laughs> I love this. <coughs> Excuse me. I will look <coughs> I will look with triumph at those who hate me. You hate me? Yeah! I don't care because the Lord's on my side. I don't know if David wrote this psalm, but if he did, I love the stuff he writes. All right, let's do <laughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a frog in my throat. I think it's all the cold air I've been breathing in in the truck. I've been just going crazy with, uh, with my air conditioning because it's been very hot and humid. I might be giving myself a cold. All right, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 25 says, Fearing human beings is a snare. Fearing human beings is a snare. But he who trusts in Adonai will be raised high above danger. Don't you love this translation? But he who trusts in Adonai will be raised high above danger. When you fear the Lord, when you trust in the Lord, there's so many advantages. My gosh. All right, Matthew. We're in the book of Matthew. Let's go to chapter 10, verse 28. And this is a wonderful verse because it is encouraging us. We're not to fear any man on earth. We are to fear nobody, but only God. And I think this one is the one I was telling you about where it uses uh, the word fear as fear or terror and also reverence and awe. It says in verse 28, do not fear those who kill the body, but are powerless to kill the soul. He's talking about fear on terror, being scared. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Yeah. So he's telling us, don't be fearing people. You gotta be fearing me because I'm the, they can only destroy the body, but I can also send, the, send your soul to where, well, I don't even like using the word, but I, you know, I mean, the, the scripture is the scripture. Fear him who can destroy both body, body and soul in hell. It's very sobering to, to even read that one. All right, John 14, 27. 14, 27 says, what, am, what I am leaving you with is shalom, which means peace. I am giving you my shalom. I don't give the way of the, I don't give the way the world gives. Don't let yourself be upset or frightened. He's giving us his shalom. He's giving us his peace. Don't be afraid. I just love this translation. All right, Romans chapter 8, verse 38 to 39. And again, here's another one talking about don't fear what people can do. Um, if you want to talk to somebody about the Lord, don't worry about what someone's going to do. Look at this amazing pastor out in, in, in California, uh, John MacArthur. We all know him from Grace Church. He was standing up for faith. We're not closing down our church. We don't care what this governor is going to do to me. I don't care. I'm going to obey. I am going to do what God says because I fear God. I don't fear you. And I just really um, thank God for that man because his testimony probably strengthened a lot of people. All right, 38. 38 and 39. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor other heavenly rulers, neither what exists nor what is coming, neither powers above nor powers below nor any other create, created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which comes to us through the Messiah, Yeshua our Lord. This is quite detailed. I'm going to read this again. This is more or less saying there's nothing, you know, the angels, um, men, human beings, anything created, anything that's created 
can do nothing to us if we are in Christ Jesus. Because God isn't created. He's always been there. He's, God is not a creation. Yeshua is not a creation. The Rach Dadesh, which is the Holy Spirit, that is not a creation. That is the triune God who's always been there. I'll read it again. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor nor other heavenly rulers, neither what exists now or what is coming, neither powers above nor powers below, nor any other cre created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which comes to us through the Messiah, Yeshua our Lord. And again, if you um, want to look at these passages and study them, um, yeah, if you need to pause the video, go back, it just these are really important these are amazing passages all right philippians 4 chapter 6 and 7. we all know this we all know this one from other translations i think it's out of uh new king james it's be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication let your requests be made known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through christ jesus i love this verse let's see what the cjb says about this don't worry about anything on the contrary make your request known to god by prayer and petition with thanksgiving then god shalom peace passing all understanding will keep your hearts and minds safe in union with the messiah yeshua <laughs> Oh, this is so amazing. I love this. This, you know, sometimes we will hear messages that give us a little bit of fear and messages that kind of make us a little bit uneasy. But this is all positive. This is, this is all amazing stuff because this is showing us that we're not supposed to fear. Actually, matter of fact, it's kind of a sin to fear because as we'll see, uh, on, I think I got another few verses here. We, we will see this. Um, 2 Timothy uh, 1 to 7, or should I say chap 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God has given us a spirit who produces timidity. And timidity means... Um, fear. It means to be scared. It means to be anxious. Um, but power, love, and self-discipline. For God has not given us a spirit of fear who produces not timidity, but power, love, and self-discipline. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. You will see that as a different translation um, from the uh, New King James. And this one is so amazing. They, these verse, some of these verses also are so short. These are ideal for uh, memorizing. They really are. All right, we only got a couple more left. I told you it wasn't going to be too long. First Peter <coughs> chapter 3, verse 14. I don't know if my throat can handle much more. Uh, yeah, First Peter chapter 3, verse 14 says, But even if you suffer for being righteous, you are blessed. If you suffer for being righteous, you are blessed. Sometimes we can suffer for it because we're not in with that crowd or people might persecute us or we may not be able to partake in other things because we're trying to live a righteous life. But even if you do suffer for being righteous, you are blessed. Moreover, don't fear what fear, what don't fear what they fear or be distributed. This one here, I think, is very blunt. It's very, it's very well telling us two different things in here. Don't fear what other people are fearing out there. If they knew what you knew, they wouldn't fear. Think about it. If you have people in your life that don't know the Lord, do you think they would fear if they knew what you knew, if they read this book? No way. They wouldn't. All right. John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, and this is the final verse I have for you. And I thought I had a couple more, but we're doing, we're on a roll here. So 1 John chapter 4, verse 18, there is no fear in love. On the contrary, love that has achieved its goal gets rid of fear. Okay, did you hear that? There is no fear in love. On the contrary, love that has achieved 
its goal gets rid of fear because fear has to do with punishment. You hear that? Fear has to do with punishment. Fear has to do with wrath. The person who keeps fearing has not been brought to maturity in regard to love. Now remember, this means fearing, being scared, being afraid of what the world can do to you, being afraid of who the people in the world can, can do to you. I'm going to repeat this one more time because this is so important. There is no fear in love. Now, who is love? Yeshua. Who, what is love? God the Father, the Holy Spirit, um, the part of the family, the union, um, the bride of the church, what we're all about, the community of God. That is love. God is love. He's got an agape love. It's an amazing love. There is no fear in, in love. On the contrary, love that has achieved its goal gets rid of fear. But fear has to do with punishment. The person who keeps fearing has not been brought to maturity in regarding to love. It's almost like it's saying that that person has not been educated, has not, that they're on the ignorant side. And not ignorant being stupid, just ignorant of not knowing. And how do they mature? How do they learn? They pick up this book and they read it. This is how you learn. There's so much in this book. Um, and I, I, there, there were so many verses. I only picked out maybe about a dozen, dozen verses, dozen, dozen and a half verses, because we, we'd be here all day. There's just so much in this precious book. My friends, I just want to say that God, um, He loves you dearly. And he doesn't want you to be scared of what's going on. We're not a part of this earth. We're not a part of this world. Um, we're just passing through. We're just passing through. And soon, because of all the... You know, for this, when you start to hear of all these crazy things that are happening, it says it right in chapter 24, Matthew. It says it right in Revelation. That there are going to be things that are going to happen on this earth. And it's not because the earth is falling apart and it's going to blow up. It's because... God predicted it. He prophesied. Yeshua prophesied it when he gave the message to John in Revelation. Yeshua said in Matthew 24, it's, it's, it's prophecy. It's in the book. It's all over the Bible. It's in Ezekiel. It's in Daniel. It's, it's everywhere. This is all meant to happen. It's all part of the last days. Unfortunately for the non-believer, it's also a part of God's wrath that is coming to this earth. So let me tell you something. The things that you're seeing around you, they're real. The intense of earthquakes, the, the intensity of weather patterns, um, the craziness of people wanting to destroy each other, the chaos, the riots, uh, the wars that are building up in the Middle East. And there is a war that's going to be building up in the Middle East, as I mentioned earlier, and that is the Gog and Magog war. This is all supposed to happen. It's all in prophecy. It is all a part of the enemy as well. He knows his time is short and he is going to just, I don't want to go in on this because we're doing so well on the positive side. I guess the part I'm trying to s share with you is that all this stuff is going to happen, yes, but you don't have to be in fear. You don't have to be in fear. Remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? They were thrown into the fiery furnace because they refused to worship an idol. <laughs> Who was in that fire? They weren't afraid to be thrown in. Who was in that fiery furnace? There was a, there was a fourth. It was, there was a fourth. The king said, I see a fourth person. Didn't we throw three in there? And one looks like the son of man. I mean, I don't think he said the son of man. I think he probably said he looks like an angel. The translation says son of man. It was something amazing that was in there. And when they came out of the furnace, they didn't even have the smell of fire on them. They didn't have a hair singed. Not even their clothes were burned. <laughs> God will be with us through the fire. He will be with us through tough times. Fear not, the Lord says, for I am with thee. Well, my friends, I hope this has been helpful to you. And may the Lord Yeshua bless you and keep you fearless. Remember, the only person you should fear, and that is with reverence and awe, is our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, our amazing Father in heaven.
Yahweh and our Comforter, the Holy Spirit, will be there to comfort you. Until next time, again, may the Lord Yeshua bless you. Bye for now. going through Denver area is just loaded with construction the last time I went through there and I did not see them finishing that anytime soon so I knew that was going to be a cluster muck so I decided to take the ring road which I think was a good choice yeah so we're going to stop here at this pilot and top up our fluids and take a break and get something to eat come on people come on Oh, I'm not going to wait anymore. I'll be standing here all day if I wait for everybody. I'll be sitting here rather. Standing? No. Sitting. Yes. <laughs> I've not been to this pilot before. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a lot of territory here I've not been through before.
to our destination. Well, I've got about 17 minutes left on my clock. <laughs> I think I did really good. Really thrilled about how this all turned out. The only thing that's a little disappointing to me right now is that I've got a, uh, I've got a, a warning light on my, uh, on my reefer. I don't know what's going on. I haven't had a look, chance to look at it. But it's it's so typical. Every every time I end up with a carrier uh, reefer, there's always something that goes wrong with it, or it gets it a yellow light, or you need to get it checked. I just can't stand these reefers. Man, I really wish I had a Thermal King. They're a lot more reliable. I'm going to park it right here in the corner because this thing is noisy and I don't want to disturb people. I'm sure someone will appreciate that. Well, I am really looking forward to seeing how I did for time because uh, this dumb GPS is not going to do anything for me. It still wants me to drive in a circle to say that I'm at this place. Hold on a second here. Sometimes this thing just drives me nuts. Come on. All right, I need to know what I got left here. It's still early enough. I don't have to worry about the horn disturbing anybody. the name of this town I think it's Bremen I think that's how you say it I think that's what the lady inside said Bremen Oklahoma I believe it is that's where we are or Bremen or Bremen but I think she said Bremen it's a hot one out here it is 82 Fahrenheit and it's not even nine o'clock yet <laughs> which is about 28, 29 Celsius. So it's very, very, very hot. So just try to clean my glasses. I bought these glasses from Walmart. They're supposed to be made from recycled stuff, but man, they are the probably cheapest glasses I think I've ever bought. They're just like peeling and falling apart. And I was trying to do a good thing by buying something recycled, but yeah. Anyway, so we got about five hours and 43 minutes left to drive and um, I was looking on Google Earth to find out what I was in for as for parking at this place and it, the setup they have there is not very good. There's two lanes that go into the facility or into the complex, the industrial complex and I guess guys that line up to check in, they have to line up on the right lane and then the, sec the lane on the left is for traffic that's going through, but you're not allowed to park there very long because I was reading some of the reviews on Google because that's what I do too. If you're going to a certain place and you don't know what you're in for, just punch in the address on Google and then go into the reviews and a lot of the time the truck drivers will read or leave reviews on what you can be in for and what you can be in store for. Um, and apparently you can get tickets by parking there and you're not allowed. One guy says there's parking overnight. The next guy says there isn't. You'll get ticketed. So I just thought, you know what? I'm not going to, it's a main road. There's two lanes going in. I'm not going to risk parking there because by the time I get there, it's going to be like, uh, 4.30 or 4 o'clock and I'm not going to sit there and park all day and night. And then if a cop shows up and says, I have to move, where do I go? So. I decided to reserve a spot at the pilot just uh, maybe a couple miles away and the reviews of that place don't look very good <laughs> but you know what I don't really care 
Uh, parking is parking, I and mean, I can get a shower too, so I'm okay with that. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make it to the Flying J, uh, just outside of Lancaster, or in Lancaster rather. Uh, it's still considered Dallas. Uh, it's apparently not the best end of town, but then again, what major truck stops in major cities are in the good part of town, right? That's one of the reasons why um, there's a truck stop there, because people don't want them in the good areas of town, <laughs> so they put them in the bad area of town. So, uh, where they don't have to listen to the trucks driving in and out, etc. So that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. We're going to go there. Uh, we have, a, like I said, a spot reserved and we're going to park there. And then we'll get up and leave about maybe quarter to 3 a.m. Oh, check it an hour before and hopefully we can get unloaded and out of there in some good time. And head down to Laredo for our pickup the following day. If that's still a go, that could change too. That could change too. Yeah, so um, we are going to be seeing some territory we haven't seen before. I have never really driven along uh, this interstate, the uh, the 35. Um, so we're going to be going through Oklahoma City as well. So that'll be nice. I've been through Oklahoma City before, but I think just on the outskirts. So I think we might also have an opportunity to see uh, Oklahoma City for the first time on my videos. If I've been through there before, I just don't remember. So. There you have it in a nutshell. I think I'll 
I'll avoid that place. So she said the pilot was a better choice, so I got a hold of customer care at Pilot Flying J. And they're always super nice there. They're always so helpful. That's why I like the Flying J. I'm glad we we, we fill up and, and fuel up at Pilot Flying J because the customer service on the phone is so, it's always so amazing. They're always really, really good. I don't think I've ever ran into a customer service representative that rubbed me the wrong way. They're, they're all nice. They're really, really cool. So they were able to cancel my other reservation at the Flying J and book me one at the Pilot, which is actually closer to where I'm delivering anyway. And I found this out too, which I did not know, that you obviously have reserved it for 24 hours. If you leave, so if I leave at 3 a.m. to go do my delivery, say I'm stuck there for five, six hours, whatever it is, I can come back and park my truck back in my reserve spot because it'll be good until four o'clock in the afternoon so I can actually get some sleep. Look at those clouds over there. Wow. Look at how dark those clouds are. Ay ay ay. This looks ugly. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, gee. That creeped up on me in a hurry. Um, so that's cool. I can actually go do my delivery and come back, park in my spot, and uh, get some sleep. I love it. I love that idea. It's wonderful. And I may end up having to reserve the spot for another. And then at the same time, I'm going to be keeping an eye of another truck pulls out of a regular parking spot. I'm going to take his spot. And then I can do my reset. I really don't want to do my reset in Dallas, but if I don't have a choice, I don't have a choice, right? Look at this system. Is this ugly or what? Phew, and I I don't know if you guys can see that, but you can see the way the clouds are like kind of pointing downward over there. I don't know if that's how funnels are created. You just never know. But I haven't had any kind of weather warnings come over my phone. You get those little weather warnings come over when something major is going to happen. But wow, super ugly system right above us here. I think we're going to get our windshield cleaned. Look at everything just got dark in a hurry. <laughs> Call me crazy, but I love this kind of weather. <laughs> I'm nuts! I know, I know. Alright, another hour and 24 minutes to go, and we can relax for the rest of today. Me. 
It's really coming down. Come on, my dear friend. Get in the other lane now. Come on. Got people hiding underneath the overpass. <laughs> It's raining so hard, I can't even see out the back of my, I can't even see my, what's behind me on my mirror. Look at this. <laughs> Not a whole lot of visibility here. I'm doing a, I'm doing a pretty safe speed though, I'm fine. driving on the center line almost. Come on, move over there, pal. There you go. You don't need both lanes. It's starting to lighten up now. Or is it? <laughs> Say is the closest I have ever been to the downtown core. 
We're gonna drive right through it, people. Tell you one thing though, I'm very grateful that I took off. I, I reserved a spot over there. <laughs> I don't think I'd get any kind of parking, to be honest with you. looking on the map it really looked like this place was real close to the city the city is way over there again don't let the maps deceive you or intimidate you oh it's so close to the downtown core that's gonna be crazy may not be as bad as you think just gotta find out where this pilot is fortunately all I gotta do is pull into a pump. I'm gonna top up all my fluids. And, uh. And then find myself some parking. Or should I say, find myself my reservation? Where is this pilot? Must be through the light or something. This is a Texaco. Come on, buddy. If you're gonna go, go. I can't slow down for you in the intersection for you. Come on. Oh, nice roads. Very nice. Bet you there's no parking in here right now. Being this, being around two o'clock or after two o'clock. So that's gonna be my plan when I do my delivery tomorrow. I'm gonna come back here and see if I can get in. I'll have my other parking spot. I'll have my reserve spot, but I'm gonna see if I can park it uh, in a spot that's um, available. Oh 
busy is this place gonna be? Ooh, there's a spot right there. Good. Oh, come on, buddy. Don't block. What are you doing? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I decided I'm gonna take a little walk around here and see what's available for parking so when I come back here uh, to early tomorrow morning I'll know where I'll know where to look but yeah it looks like they're gonna get a storm rolling in here too I was looking on the weather forecast and looks like there's gonna be a storm rolling in possible thunder showers today and tomorrow wouldn't that be cool? I love a good thunder shower. I'll tell you one thing, it is cooling down here. Those clouds that are rolling in is cooling everything down. Listen to these birds. I don't know what kind of birds these are, but man, they sure sing a beautiful tune, don't they? I love the tune they sing. I don't know, I can't even do it. No. Beautiful. Listen to those crazy birds. so tired right now <laughs> yes I am on my way to deliver this load I'm exhausted I don't like getting up so early that you didn't get any sleep I fell asleep at 10 o'clock last night so that means I got a whole three hours sleep because these stupid delivery times is so... Well, I don't know, it's not really... No. My delivery time is for four o'clock, but you gotta check in earlier and you end up sitting a long lineup, apparently. fun it's going to be squeezing into these spots. 
Not much room here. Not a lot of room. Uh, unless I got a couple nice open ones here, but it's okay. I have done worse than this. There is door 24 right there. One more to go here. There you are. Door 24. I'm gonna open up my door. done here got here at uh, when was it almost three took them three hours to get me in and unload me then we're all done mission accomplished now the another the other big test rather will be what will I find for a parking spot when I come back? I know I still have my other parking spot. If someone's in it, then I just get the security guard to tell them to move because they still paid for it. Yeah. So I just have to, uh, I'm just hoping because it's early enough, some guys might have left already to head to, a, to do their deliveries that there might be a couple spots open where I don't have to look for a spot later. That's what I'm hoping for. So dear Lord, <laughs> I pray that there will be a spot available for me when I get to that pilot where I can just park it for the rest of the day without having to move again. That would be ideal. see if there's any spots available or I'll just go to the one that I had unless someone's taking it and I do believe someone looks like they're in the spot that I was in so the security guards probably gonna have to knock on his door and say you got to move that's not a nice way to wake up I'm hoping there will be something available for me here. And I see a snow. There's a spot there. That's a bobtail there. That's a bobtail. I don't understand that why the guys park their bobtails like that when there's lots of spots around the truck stop. Okay, there's a spot right there. There's two spots right there. Perfect. I don't have to go very far. I love that. Just crack a nut right here, hopefully. Actually, no, we're not going to be able to crack a nut. See, this is exactly what I was hoping for. Get here a little bit early, someone's left for their appointment, and then I can get in there and grab a spot. And then I don't have to move it again, because once I park it at my reserve spot, then I have to go back on duty again to drive it and park it again. Legally, that's what you would have to do. Some guys would use personal conveyance, I guess, but come on, get in gear. I don't like doing that. I do not like doing that. 
like doing that. It's great here. There's a couple of spots. Beautiful. Well, we're gonna shut things down for now, do our reset, and we'll catch up with you guys probably Thursday morning. See you then.